This is the In Focus podcast from the Hindu. Hello and welcome to another edition of the In Focus podcast. I am your host G Sampal. The Lok Sabha polls 2024 will be held from April 19 in seven phases across the country. In Bihar, West Bengal and Uttar Pradesh voting will take place in all the seven phases. Assembly elections will also be held simultaneously in Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh. The last phase of voting will be on June 1st and counting will take place on June 4th. This parliamentary election interestingly is the second longest polling exercise in India's electoral history or it will be the second longest once it happens. The longest one was the country's first general election which was held over a 5 month period from September 1951 to February 1952. But the 2004 Lok Sabha polls for instance were held in only 4 phases between April 20 and May 10. They were over in 20 days. And if you look at the 1998 elections for the Lok Sabha they took place in 3 phases on February 16th, 22nd and 28th and they were over in just 2 weeks. So what has changed in India between 1998 or 2004 and 2024 a matter of like 25 years that we have become so much slower taking many times longer to do the same thing which is conduct the election for the same number of lok sabha seats why does india need seven phases to hold general elections how do other big democracies like indonesia for instance manage it in one day and what are the pros and cons of having a multi phase election We discuss the reasons for and implications of a lengthy poll schedule in this episode of In Focus and we have with us Mr. M G Devasahayam a former IAS officer who is also coordinator of the Citizens Commission on Elections Mr. Devasahayam thank you so much for joining us and welcome to In Focus Thank you very much So uh, we know for instance that India's first general elections as I already said Uh, in 1951 52 took place uh, over 5 months it was the first ever election so we understand there were a lot of issues to be sorted the so time was needed but the 1998 lok sabha elections took three phases and two weeks but this time we have the second longest general election ever you know after the first one so now we also have evms you know which is the electronic voting machine which should make counting etc much quicker So why are we slower in finishing our elections today than we were 25 years ago? There's a big dichotomy here. You mentioned about it's taking more than two months, and uh, you also talked about counting. Very strange. They take more than two months to conduct their elections, but they want to complete the counting in the matter of a couple of hours. That is where the major problem is arising about the integrity of the elections. the electronic voting machines as you rightly said was introduced in 1998 99 and it was introduced in full scale later 2014 2019 now of course we got uh, 2019 onwards we got another uh, uh, device called vvpat so all these what they want to do is the electoral county is the most critical of all the electoral operations so having conducted elections myself several uh, decades ago but they want to do this electoral process for two months more than two months and they want to and they they they, they even filed an affidavit in the supreme court they just want to finish off the counting in the matter of couple of hours and finish it up by so they, the, the uh, sir, by, look, by by they you mean the election commission the election commission okay. the election commission has been telling lies in the supreme court that uh, it will take the four days five days they don't want to even delay now that is what is casting doubt Now this inordinate delay. Sir, uh, you said that they want to complete the counting in a couple of hours, but counting is uh, they they have they have taken like three days more. Like the voting ends on June. That's, that's what I'm. Counting I, I, will be on June four. I am coming to that. Okay, okay, sorry. They they are taking as many days as they want before counting, but when the counting starts, they want to finish it off in a jiffy. That is where the serious doubt over the integrity of the electoral process is starting, because. as stalin the joseph stalin once said it is not what is being counted who is counting the votes so the serious doubts are being raised it's a very serious matter and election commission is not now for instance you have seen the electoral schedule and they have taken their own relaxed way they have taken any number of days and as you rightly said they finish off the last phase 
in in in, in May, and June June first, and three days. These three days is for for a peculiar reason. Under the paper ballot, there used to be booth capturing and ballot stuffing, so they used to give a gap of one day to find out which all the booths ballot stuffing and booth capturing has taken place. So if the matter is serious, they order a report third day. So they take two clear days, one day to find out where all this investigate, where all this ballot stuffing and uh, 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 ballot box booth capturing has taken place, uh, and another day to conduct reports. So that's why they've taken three days for, between the last day and the counting. That is paper ballot. Now they say, under, under EVM, there's no such thing will ever happen. But still, they don't want to. They want to drag on, drag on, drag on as much as possible till the counting day, giving maximum. This is one major, very important thing that people have not noticed. Second is, as you rightly said, campaign. Now, this distinctly gives advantage uh, campaigning to the ruling party, particularly in the present case to the prime minister, because the way the ruling party campaign is structured, it is all, it's almost 99% centered around. He is the VAP uh, campaigner, star campaigner, all, all put together. So he has to move around, and the schedule has been prepared in such a manner that he can move around, and he can also reach as many people as possible because the opposition doesn't need this kind of time because they've got multiple people, multiple parties. So that is one of the objectives. My serious doubt is, the schedule is not being prepared by the election commission. It is prepared by the PMO and given to the election commission. That is where but I sir, think that will be uh, that's like uh, that will be speculative. No? I mean, opposition can also take use of make use of this extended uh, campaign uh, days and weeks, just as the ruling party. They can. don't. They don't. They don't need that much. You see, they don't have the kind of tools. So the entire media is with the prime minister, the ruling party, the mainstream media at least. They will, they will broadcast every speech of his, wherever he may speak, even if it's Gauhati or in Patna or in uh, Ravandram, live telecast takes place. This doesn't take place for the opposition party. See, you have the media with you. So you reach out. Now, I'll tell you something very important. This matter has not been, uh, it's been there has been oversight on this. This schedule gives 12 premium days. You have asked one question, that what happens about... Uh, you know, this uh, uh, implementation of model code of conduct. This schedule gives 12 premium days to the Prime Minister for broadcasting to the nation. So, how, so how, what, do you, what how do you arrive there? at this figure of 12, sir? 12? I, I'm, I'm explaining to you. See, there are two days where uh, campaigning is banned. Okay. Uh, 24 hours, 48 hours before the close of poll, all campaigning stops. Okay, so two days, I will say. So now, moral code of conduct has already come into effect. So campaigning will take place only, uh, can't take place on these 12 days. Whereas the media is continued to operate. What happens, this happened in the last election also. So these two days when polling is uh, the, the, the prohibited days, somewhere else it is not prohibited. So prime minister is campaigning somewhere else. And as the people are going to vote in some other constituency, live they are seeing Prime Minister on the screen. The previous day, on the voting day itself. This happened frequently in 2019 election. So the, the schedule you must look at in combination. This schedule should not be looked up in isolation. It should be in uh, looked up in combination with the media power they have. The media power that we have in today is completely, completely lopsided. So take that, that 12 premium days when there is a uh, silent, silent day and the voting day. And on the board days, Prime Minister will be campaigning somewhere else where the, this prohibition is not there. But it will be broadcast live to the people who are uh, sort of observing the silent day as well as the voting day. This is and, a great, uh, very let, big distortion that is taking. Let, let me clarify this. Yes. So this model uh, code of conduct it is imposed only locally, not uh, nationally, when the voting is happening? No, no, no. That's why the model of uh, conduct is for all. See, particularly for those who are uh, going to fall on June 1st, the model of conduct is nearly for about, uh, what do you call that, uh, two and a half months. 
Right. No, no. This this silent day and voting day when no campaigning is allowed, that is enforced only locally, is it? See, uh, now for instance, let us say, take, let's take UP, Allahabad and Lucknow. Okay. Lucknow is a silent day and a voting day. Allahabad, it is not because it is in a different phase. So, a prime minister will be campaigning in Allahabad or even in Patna or any, any other place, maybe in even Calcutta, and it is, it is, it is broadcast live. So those who are living in Lucknow, they are seeing the Prime Minister campaigning on that silent day and also on the Voters Day. That's what I'm trying to say. So you're saying the Opposition media, not... uh, the access to media, the media power of of, of a particular yes. party neutralizes or counters the silent day logic itself. Ab absolutely. So this schedule must be looked at in tandem with the media power. Right, 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 right. So uh, you're basically saying because of this, uh, I mean, six six plus one uh, phases of election, and the two days attached to each uh, each phase of election, uh, which is which are silent and voting days. So those two days where no campaigning is allowed, those two multiplied by six, those twelve premium days is what you're saying is being being delivered as a benefit to a particular party. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So in that case, sir, what what exactly are the legitimate factors? Would you say? that an election commission should typically be taking into account when mapping out the poll schedule. Even even if you, lay, if you leave out this particular factor, this 12 premium days you talked about, there might be genuine reasons why uh, a poll might need more than one phase. You know, So what are those legitimate concerns? The concerns are, you see, it can't be uh, disputed, what the chief election commissioner said that day, that India is a subcontinent. It's not just an ordinary country. And we have about a billion voters, 97 crores to be almost precise. So it does require massive amount of logistics. There are several factors which comes in when we are planning this electoral uh, this, this, this schedule. One is number one is the climate. We have the country has got extreme climates. Number two, extreme rainfall or snowfall, heat, whatever it is. Number two, the examinations for the school and college children. Then number three, the mobility of the uh, staff, the, what, 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 the staff which is uh, on, on voting duty. Then the mobility of the security forces. There are several factors. All these have to be factored in and then only schedule has to be fixed. There's no doubt about it. But the question is, as you rightly said, when you have 1998, you did it in such a short time. You have 1980, it was done in four days' time. Even last 2019 election was done in 35 days' time. 2014 election also was done in 35, 30, 36 days' time. Now it is taking 45 days' time, which this is, is a bit unusual. This distinctly gives advantage to a particular uh, group of people or a particular individual who is the star campaigner and with the media power reach out to everybody, which is the, thereby uh, seriously damaging the level playing field. That's what my reading is. And particularly you asked a question, uh, the, the gap between stage two and stage three, the 10 days gap, it is inexplicable. Because I checked up whether there is any festivals. There are no festivals. Only the routine festivals are there with the monthly festivals. Right, I mean the, the gap between uh, the gap between other phases, first and second and fourth and fifth, third and fourth, there is approximately one week gap. But between the second and the third phase of the polling, there is like almost I think more than uh, ten days, right? I mean, I looked at it. Phase two, twenty April twenty sixth, and May seventh is the third phase. There are ninety four constituencies, and the constituents that is going for election that day are absolute strongholds of the NDA. Out of the 94 constituencies in 2019, they have won 84, and uh, the India combination won only 8. So probably uh, the ruling party want to consolidate this and make it 100%. And you may also look at the next one, May 13th, because this advantage goes to the next phase, phase 4 also. That also is 96 constituencies. Both put together 190 constituencies, and both these are stronghold of the NDA. Probably they want to consolidate. And you must compare it with phase one, 102. That is not stronghold of the uh, ruling party. It is almost equal. So they are not, they don't want to waste much time in an area where the battle is equal because they know it will continue to be so. So there is something fishy about this schedule also and the gap 
between one stage to another stage. Yeah, it does give suspicion which uh, the chief election commissioner could not display. Right. Also, uh, coming to the last date of voting and the gap between that and uh, uh, and, the, and the counting date, uh, Mr. Devasam, you, we, you, we sort of discussed it briefly earlier. Why would you need three days after the last date of voting to start the counting? And then I think you also said that once the counting is started, everything is finished very fast, right? I mean, there is no scope for checking or matching with uh, various calculations, with VVPAT, uh, if there is any mismatch of data and so on and so forth. So what exactly are the logistical uh, factors that might uh, warrant having uh, this June 1 finishing and June 4? Because in other countries, especially in Europe, we've seen co counting does happen on the, on the very next day and it's all done in like a matter of 48 hours. Yes. I'll come to the second part of your question a little later. That is, that's a very important question. First is, is carrying forward from the paper ballot days. Paper ballot days, there used to be a complaint on the voting day of booth capturing and uh, ballot stuffing. See, those days, you know, it used to be manual. There's no technology. There's no communication technology. Even bringing into the notice of the election commission itself will take its time. Repoll can be ordered only by the election commission. So it, it by the time the ballot boxes come back midnight passes midnight, by the time the report comes, it's in the morning of the next day. The report goes to the election commission saying that these are the cases of booth capturing and ballot stuffing. So they do an invest quick investigation to find out to what extent it has affected the electoral process. If it is very serious, they order the report. So that takes one day. So the next day. Third, third day, the repoll actually takes place. So you can't have the counting. So two days are given for obtaining the seriousness of these booth capturing and ballot stuffing and ordering a repoll, conducting a repoll on the third day, on the fourth day, then you do the counting. It is This is not at all necessary now because they say under EVM, there is no booth capturing, there is no ballot stuffing. So they are still following the paper ballot system which actually, as I had written an article last week, is a real voting system. Even, even under the present law, sorry for uh, sort of taking it uh, slightly away from the question that you asked. Even from the pre present Representative People's Act and conduct of election rules, paper ballot is a primary mode of uh, voting in India. The EVM is a default option. But somehow or other, the EV Election Commission has uh, developed a great love and affection for uh, 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 for EVM and they stick to the EVM like leeches. They will not listen to any complaint even from the from the topmost experts in the world about the EVM being a black box but the voter is unable to know whether the her vote is cast as intended, recorded as cast and, and counted as recorded. They, it's absolutely blind. So, uh, but, but they are sticking to it. They are mocking at the people. So coming to an, uh, see your second question, this has been the uh, issue for the last several years, since ever since the VVPAT was introduced. The word VVPAT is Voter Verifiable Paper Audit Trail. Voter Verifiable Paper Audit Trail. Four words. Voter comes in. Verifiable by the voter. Paper should be paper is the one to verify, cross it, and audit. Now, we have been telling them, listen, and then 2013, actually, a rule was counted. A rule was uh, framed. A rule was amended. You say that it's a paper ballot, the paper, the slip, which is a real vote. We have been telling the election commission that that's a paper slip that you should count and cross-verify with the electronic counting. The voter must know whether the vote was cast as intended, recorded as cast, and her representative must know whether it was counted as recorded. Uh, right, right, Mr. Devasam. Uh, EV, I mean, EVM is a separate uh, discussion. So, one last question, sir, before we uh, wrap up. So, uh, we we know that uh, you know other democracies such as Indonesia and then most Western European democracies, which are like the gold standard for liberal democracies, as we know. I mean, they manage to hold their elections in one day and announce the results the next day. So, do they use EVMs or do they use paper ballots? How do they manage it uh, so fast and efficiently? I think most of them do use paper ballot and they count, uh, I think, uh, rapidly. All of them use paper ballot. And they have a scientific system now. They do the scanning. 
In some countries, what they do is the paper ballot is not paper. See, the the, the best system. I'll explain what 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 they are doing in Belgium, and that's what most of the countries are doing. They are really using genuine technology. The voter goes in, swipes the identity card, which is specially made for this purpose, and she gets a paper slip in her hand, and that is put together through a scanner, and she goes home. And uh, that's it. And uh, the scan, the scanning is simultaneously done with the with with the voting. Uh, counting is very 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 easy. Not this clumsy process of having a EVM, having a VV pad, and carrying these all these in bags, transportation, storing it for forty five days, and then opening them, then attaching it is all. This is quack technology, half baked. If they want to do technology, do full technology. The so technology basically, you are saying uh, in the first world democracies and liberal democracies that we know of, like Western Europe and the US, Canada, and so on, they use the paper ballot and then they use the scanner to scan the paper ballot to see what who has, what is the vote. Is it done in front of the voter while the voter is present? Or voter it... herself scans. Voter herself scans. Okay, okay, and because it's scanned, it gets digitized and then the counting is pretty fast. Is that how it works? Uh, so because the voter she she sees it herself. Okay, uh, the candidate is satisfied. And scans it, and that's it. And simultaneously counting takes place. Only that they have to announce the result. So has uh, this technology, uh, has this scanning paper ballot plus scanning uh, been proposed in India? Has it ever been discussed, uh, tried out anywhere in India? See, the problem is, see, uh, this is a very good question. I think you are giving me an opportunity. This is precisely, see, when we had the uh, Citizens Commission, uh, Commission election, had the best brain in the world. And we gave this report. This is what we wanted for the for last three, four years. We have been seeking an interview with the election commission, seeking a discussion with them. They refused to meet us. They refused to acknowledge to us. They are not. They said they have their own technical committee, hackneyed old, old uh, uh, technical committee. They don't want. They are not receptive to any new ideas. Right. Thank. Thank you so much, sir. I mean, I think we have covered the the, the multi-phase uh, question that we started with fairly comprehensively. Thank you so much for your observation. Very valid, of course, and a lot of debate, a uh, lot of debatable points here. I think I hope there will be a public uh, national conversation on these issues. Thank you so much once again for joining us. Thank you very much for this opportunity. In Focus will be back soon with analysis of the biggest news issues. In the meantime, you can find our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and other platforms. Just search for In Focus by The Hindu. We'll see you soon.